And I'm here with uh, Professor Griff, the one, the only, the legend. Cut it out, man. <laughs> um, Griff, I want to talk to you about um, music sort of used as like a brainwashing campaign. Mm. Um, back in um, August of 1980, Louis Farrakhan said, um, music, uh, we should be careful with what we let on the airwaves because it's a source of power that we can use as a form of mind control for big business. Now, I think that when you listen to music, you listen to saying that certain song that you like over and over again, and it, it depends on whether that song has a positive message or a negative message that, you know, you listen to it over and over again, you know, that, that's brainwashing. So why did you choose the path that you chose with, with the message in your music rather than focusing on, you know, the negative stereotypes? And Well, I think we need to understand, um, I think it was Stephen Jacobson that said that um, when, you, when, when, when repetition is the mother of learning, it's up to the individual to determine whether or not this, this message is positive or negative. But what Stephen Jacob, Jacobson is talking about in Mind Control in America is that the way they program the music, all right, with the subliminal seduction and the, and the frequencies and the vibrations that they're putting in the music, they take that power away from the individual. You understand what I'm saying? To the point where it numbs you and it causes this cognitive dissidence and then you have to try to decide and you can't because you're in it. You understand what I'm saying? So it's either you think, you're gonna feel, you're gonna react, and all these things are going on at the same time. And I guarantee you, your favorite song come on, you don't even know that the subliminal messages are in it, you're gonna lose every single time because you get locked and you get caught up in it. Especially if you up in the club and you don't throw a, a couple back and you with your homies, oh, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. All right. Um, you know the term entropy? No. Entropy, um, there, there's a couple different terms, but basically it's the measurement of disorder within a system, which says that there's always going to be a measurement of disorder within that system. So do you think people like us are always going to exist? Oh, my God. I think in a minute, you know, the Alex Joneses of the world, the, uh, the we are change people sleep no more um, I'm thinking that the, the, the we're gonna be the vast majority we're gonna turn on the radio and it's gonna be eight rage against the machines you understand what I'm saying you know five public enemy groups oh, of course man I mean two or three uh, Narubi Sela uh, black dot immortal technique wise intelligent that's gonna be the norm you understand what I'm saying seriously and, and those other people are gonna be knocking on the door trying to get in we're going to be like, nah, it's all right. <laughs> we'll play your stuff late at night. <laughs> I'm serious. For those that's still on the little yellow bus. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, I want to talk about um, basically like, like kind of like psychological warfare um, with the whole, with the whole how, how the Watts riots led up into the forming of the Black Panthers and then how the Black Panthers eventually split up into the Bloods and Crips. It was like a time of violence, a time of peace, and then it converted to a time of self-violence where, where a group that was once solid is now killing each other ever since. Yeah, I think that was done by design. I think um, J. Edgar Hoover and the COINTELPRO, uh, J. Edgar Hoover, the FBI, director of the FBI at that particular time, and his field officers had set this agenda in motion, man. And, and um, I think a lot of us, even to this day, don't, don't realize there were certain aspects of the black and white community working together. Um, but we don't know that bit of history. Um, and when he, when he put these things and set these particular things in motion, there were agents working inside not only the Black Panther Party, but Nation of Islam and a lot of other black organizations and even the white organizations um, that set certain things in motion that when we look at it today, we have this feeling that we cannot work together. Um, and the basic, simple, simplistic things that we should be able to have the intellect enough to look past, we can't even get past it, i.e., the, the color of someone's skin, i.e., a basic philosophy. Um, it's so stupid now, man, the goddamn cereal that you eat in the morning, we can't even decide on that, get past that. You understand? Well, oh, that was a joke, but anyway, you know what I'm saying. But um, it, is, it is truly, really, really ridiculous, the amount of black people that came against me when I uh, did the Obama deception, when Alex Jones put the film out. Um, I just finished filming the Obama deception too for Alex Jones. And um, I can't wait for the people with the lip service and the naysayers 
Um, they're gonna have a whole lot to say, but then again, that's healthy. I tell them to bring it all of the time, all the time. Just, just bring it, whatever you have to say. But if you're gonna call me a liar, then why don't you present the truth? Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Because the first casualty of war is the truth. Yeah. So how, how do you think we can put a, put aside those petty differences to actually work on this goal? Because it's it, it... study, research. Um, we can sit and disagree that 9-11 was an inside job. But hell, if you do the research and the number of researchers and people that made films and have actual facts and actual footage, shit, you gotta be Stevie Wonder, man, or Ray Charles not to see that, man. You understand what I'm saying? It's right there in front of our eyes. And those that want to deny it, I don't know. Do, do, do you think people um, don't want to see it? Do you think we're, we, we basically accept lies better than we accept the truth? There's a lot of times people just want to keep their head in the sand, even though they know these things are going on. Um, this concept called durational suicide. It's simple. They know they're dying, but they keep doing the same thing that's killing them. So you're doing something that's detrimental to your health and your spiritual health, but you keep doing it. But you're doing it over a duration, over a period of time. And these people, they, they don't want to hear it. Yeah. They figure they got a car note and a house payment, yeah. and they're trying to send their children to college, so they're not trying to hear it. Man. Do you think all that money can buy them true happiness? Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, when you really look at it, money can only buy you a few things. Yeah. The, the, the things that you're going to need in life to sustain your life, money can't buy. Plain and simple. Yeah. I mean, the greatest reality is the unseen reality. You could go a minute without food. Yeah. You can go a minute without water, but you're not going a minute without air. <laughs> you understand the same? Yeah. yeah, you'll kill your mama for some air. Bro. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's critical. So, um, have you ever had your moments of doubt during all this? Like when it seems the opposition is just all against you. And if you have, what have you done to get get yourself out of that funk? That's a beautiful question, man. I've, I've only doubted my ability or my inability to be able to speak past my anger. And that's just me being transparent right now. That's very real. I get angry to the point where, you know, okay, why don't this young kid see it, man? It's right here. I got angry, so angry, I pulled my book back and I revamped my book and I put 700 images in my book to the point where I'm going after the 12, 13, and 14 year old. Because if that music have them grip, I want, to, I want to at least pull their hands apart a little to the point where to loosen that grip. To say, lend me your ear for a minute, man. You could go back to it, but go back to it with a different mindset and a different spirit. So yeah, I had those doubts, but I was only doubting you know, myself, my inability. Like for example, certain aspects of uh, South America, certain aspects of New Mexico, and, Southern California and other places I go and heavy Latino population. I don't speak Spanish, so I feel handicapped. Mm. And then the person that came along with me to translate some of the things I was saying don't have my passion. Mm. It's handicapped me. I'm, I'm, I'm looking and reaching out for people that can sign, doing sign language. I want to speak, but I can't. It's, it's handicapping me, so I feel frustrated sometimes. You understand what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Even on a college campus, they'll pull me in and say, listen, it's heavy Protestant population and yada yada yada. It's a, it's a Catholic school or it's a, a religious institution. You might not want to say this, say that, say this, say that. Say, well, what do you want me to do? I can't come and keep saying and regurgitating the same thing that's already been said with a different face. I'm not a bobblehead, man. I'm speaking truth to power. I got to speak to their soul. I got to wake them up. I got to speak their language. The cat sitting in the third row like this, smelling like weed. He just drank, you know, missed eight classes that day. How the hell are you going to reach him? You can't reach him by speaking the king's English. You got to talk his language, yeah. plain and simple. You got to find that bond, that, 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 that connection, that human emotion. Exactly, and that's what I'm trying to reach, man. And, you know, that's what I try to do with police. You know, every time they pull me over, I try to get them out of that robot mentality and bring that human emotion back into them, you know? Yeah, they follow the script. Yeah. Yes, they, they, pull, they pull you over, smart ass white kid that want to, you know, think he's going to get out of this ticket. Yeah. kind of thing yeah. and it's just the opposite with me you understand what i'm saying yeah um automatically i'm, I'm pigeonholed as, as the thug as the you know stereotypical black dude i probably just, i'm leaving probably just robbing somebody's house or something so not only do they pull me over and want the id and the registration and the insurance they want to pop the trunk and put you face down on the curb that kind of thing so so, so, so how do we go about changing this conventional educate, wisdom educate the police 
they're not beyond reproach. Okay. Sooner or later, they got to take the badge off. Yeah. So let's talk. Nice, nice, nice. I like that. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. They're not. Be, they're not. They can be educated also. We can have a dialogue. Yeah. And then sometimes, sometimes, in most cases, I do. I'll take the ticket. Cool. Now let me ask you something, Mr. Officer. <laughs> After we finish paying, man, can you donate to We Are Change <laughs> so I can help pay this ticket? <laughs> Awesome, man. All right, um, just to wrap it up, um, let people know who they probably they, everybody probably knows you, but you know where they can find your work, what you're doing, um, your books. This is Professor Griff. Um, still in Public Enemy, still doing the damn thing. We just got um, inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, you can check that out at publicenemy.com, or you can go to www.pgriff.info. Um, or just call me directly, 678-557-2919. And uh, for the government agents that are out there, just, you know, at least buy the book, Psychological Covert War on Hip Hop, Analytics, Acapella Revolution. Um, yeah, just contribute. I mean, hell, you're doing everything to, to, to stop the movement, but like Chuck said, you can't stop the bum rush. You understand what I'm saying? Um, Professor Griff is linking up with We Are Change, Sleep No More, and all these groups that are out here, and we're going to make this happen, man. We're not going to have this color thing interfere with us in 2013 and beyond. Come with another trick. You understand what I'm saying? It's not working today. All right? But anyway, Steve Biko says revolution is not an event. Um, it's a process, and you need to understand it. It's going to roll on when Professor Griff is dead and gone. Are you following me? And uh, you, you need to understand that. So I know you're hard at work. When we're asleep, your agents are still hard at work to try to derail the movement. But it's a lot larger than us three standing here. It's a lot larger than we are changed. It's a lot larger than public enemy. All right, but as long as we're here, breathing, we have to at least try to raise the conscious level of the entire human family. All right, one segment, one individual at a time. But I want to let y'all know, you touch one, you touch all. Peace. I feel that personally, we are our own government. You know what I mean? If you need something, you got to know how to get it. If you don't know how to get it, then you're going to be in a world of hurt. God forbid we have a major catastrophe. You know what I mean? Sandy was just, um, how you say, like a feather in the wind, so to speak. You know what I mean? When it comes to you know, uh, major catastrophes of things that could really happen here. You know, and people should never get comfortable. You know what I mean? Always, just in case of emergency, the what if arise. You know, they should be able to know what to do, when to do, and how to get it done. If you don't, you're gonna always be looking for a handout from the so-called government. I know there's a lot of things going that, that, that force, that are forcing this type of temperament. You know, and we're seeing it happen more and more often. I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist on this, but honestly, all you got to do is stop and listen. Talk to people. Feel what's going on, and you'll see that this, ter this type of resonance is building. And, 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 and w when something that impactful is going on, there are going to be peaks in different ways. But it's a lot larger than us three standing here. It's a lot larger than we are changed. It's a lot larger than public enemy. All right, but as long as we're here, breathing we have to at least try to raise the conscious level of the entire human family all right one segment one individual at a time but i want to let y'all know you touch one you touch all peace thank you very much man that was awesome give thanks don't hurt nobody Can